There are so many smartphone gimbals out there. Sometimes it can be overwhelming to find the right one. The question is, what is the best smartphone gimbal to achieve better video? After creating videos since I was a little kid, I've come to find that gimbals are a great first step for someone who is serious about making better videos. They maintain your horizon and stabilize your footage so that you have a more professional looking image. Today, we're gonna look at four gimbals that are similar and drill down to figure out which one is right for you. This video is being sponsored by the Hohem family. And I want to go out into the field and use each one of these gimbals in real world situations so you know which one is best for you. We're going to cover the iSETI Mobile Plus, the X2, the V2, and the Multi. We're going to try each of them out, go out and get some cinematic footage, and I'm going to tell you how easy or hard each one is to balance and how long it took me. If you like videos like this one, be sure to subscribe and share this video with your other camera gear buddies. If you stick around for the whole video, somewhere between now and the end, I'll share with you which one I think you'll get the most value from. And that's what we're covering today on the Film Alliance. All four of these gimbals are rechargeable, easy to balance, and they come with tripod legs, so they can easily stand up on a hard surface. They fold up for traveling. All phone gimbals balance the same way, and once you've done it a couple times, it becomes second nature. There are plenty of videos out there that will teach you how to balance a gimbal, so I'm just gonna focus on the usability of each one of these gimbals and not how to balance them. The first gimbal we're gonna cover is the Mobile Plus. It took me about two minutes to balance an iPhone SE on it. The Mobile Plus has an upgraded iSteady 6.0 anti-shake technology, which allows you to shoot stable and smooth multi-scene shots. The Mobile Plus features a newly developed inception mode that allows you to vertically rotate your phone 360 degrees. It has an auto rotation mode and 600 degree wide rotation range. If you download the app to your phone, you can control the phone camera with zoom and record from the controls of the gimbal itself. If you hook up and download the app to your phone, you can control the phone camera with the zoom rocker and the record from the controls of the gimbal itself. It's got a trigger on the back, which will recenter the phone on a double tap and holding it down will turn the gimbal into a sport mode for faster shots. The mode button will put you into pan follow mode with one tap. Two taps will be a pan tilt follow, which is my favorite. A triple tap will lock it into place. I like that for when I want my frame to remain exactly the same, but I'm doing something like pushing in. And four taps will put it into all following and inception mode. The app also has object lock when you wanna lock onto an object or face tracking for a person. I prefer to control the entire thing manually without the app just because I feel like I have more control. I try to achieve cinematic footage by making sure I have some foreground in my shot and sliding right or left or forward. The Mobile Plus will be an excellent option if you're into vlogging or real estate type videos. Now the next gimbal we're gonna talk about is the much smaller X2. It took me about two minutes to balance an iPhone SE on it. The X2 is a three axis stabilization and has anti-shake. This is extremely helpful when you're walking over rough terrains or if you twisted your ankle and don't have the ninja walk down 100%. I think the foldable design is so cool because you can fit it right in your pocket. The X2 also has face and object tracking and comes with a remote. You have to mount the phone camera on the left side so you don't see the gimbal arm. On the gimbal itself, you have a battery indicator, a Bluetooth light, a joystick, power button, and a shutter button. Also a zoom slider on the left side. On the opposite side, you have a USB port for charging and you can switch between landscape and vertical mode with one touch on the power button for those of you who like to get those vertical shots. I love how small this gimbal is. It's super easy to use and you quickly become accustomed to how the gimbal moves. It's almost like it becomes an extension of your arm. I can get into tight spaces or get some shots I would have never been able to get with a DSLR gimbal setup. I think the X2 is for people who like to take family videos or for vlogging or even people who would like to get behind the scenes footage of their A-roll from their A-cam. You do need the app in order to activate your gimbal, which I'm not a huge fan of because sometimes your phone might not have the capabilities of having an app, like if you have an older phone or if you have the type of phone that doesn't have apps. So make sure you have the capabilities of downloading an app if you wanna get the X2. After you activate it, you can change the different shooting modes in the app or on the gimbal using the shutter and power buttons. Now let's talk about the V2. It has the same body type as the X2, so what makes it different? I was able to balance it just as easily as the X2 and the app connected with no problem at all. You also need the app connected to the phone to activate it. It has outstanding stabilization performance and the button layout and functionality is the same as the X2, but the V2 has built-in lighting and an adjustable brightness, which makes the V2 a 
a great gimbal for low light environments like a wedding. The V2 is also about $40 more than the X2 because it has a unique AI tracking sensor and gesture control. Now the AI sensor can track a subject's face without any app required. To activate the AI sensor, you turn on the AI sensor by pressing the button on the top and making an OK sign with your hand. And once you want it to stop, you just hold up your hand. I think the V2 is great for those of you who like to do YouTube videos and you don't have someone there to record you. It will follow you around as you explain whatever you're explaining. I may use this feature when my camera guy calls in sick. Now onto our last gimbal, the Multi, which is the most expensive out of all these gimbals, mainly due to the fact that it can hold small cameras, action cameras, and not just your phone. The Multi's body design is close to the Mobile Plus and it has all the same buttons and functionality as the Mobile Plus. But the Multi is able to have small cameras and action cameras attached. Now, when I say small cameras, I don't mean like APS-C cameras like the ZV-E10 or full frame cameras like the A7 III, but more like point and shoot cameras like the ZV-1. It took me about 10 minutes to balance the ZV-1 on this gimbal, which in my opinion is normal because anytime you balance a camera that has an extendable lens once you turn it on, it's gonna make balancing on a gimbal pretty tricky. I did try to get the ZV-E10 on there, but it seemed like it was just a little bit too big so I'd say anything smaller than the ZV-E10 would work. You can control the ZV-1 from the gimbal's button interface for recording and zooming. Hohem provides an exclusive cable only for Sony compact cameras. It has real tech gear with six working modes which can meet the demands of any multi-scene application. I would use this gimbal as a beginner filmmaker and I could switch my smartphone and my camera in and out for multi-use applications. So out of all these gimbals, the one that I prefer is the multi because you're not just stuck only using your smartphone. If you decide one day that your smartphone is causing you to be distracted from those around you or your responsibilities, and it's keeping you from what you're called to be and say you pick up something like the light phone, then you may not always have a smartphone which would render this gimbal useless. That's why I like the option of being able to use either a smartphone or a small camera. I do like all of these gimbals, however, and I know there's a need and a place for all of them. Each person has their individual needs on which one is best for them. It all depends on what you need it for. So you have to ask your question, what am I gonna be using this gimbal for? Am I gonna be traveling with it? Am I gonna be doing vlogs or family videos or real estate videos? And then you'll be able to better understand which gimbal is right for you. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until the next one, have a great week.